What happens when you turbocharge a Hayabusa? A bike already feared in stock form suddenly becomes a monster that keeps every rival brand awake at night. The Suzuki Hayabusa was born fast. A legend, a weapon, a motorcycle so dominant that it forced the entire industry into a speed limiting agreement just to keep things under control. But then someone asked, what if we add a turbo? And that's where the story gets insane. Stock Hayabusa, around 190 horsepower. Turbo Hayabusa, 600 horsepower, 800, even 1000 HP on full build machines. At this point, you aren't riding a motorcycle, you're holding on to a controlled explosion. And the results? Absolutely ridiculous. Turbo Busa builds have been clocked at 270 miles per hour, 434 kilometers an hour. That's faster than most supercars, faster than GP bikes, and fast enough to make engineers from other brands whisper to each other, bro, we didn't design anything to fight that. The acceleration is brutal, the kind that snaps your neck, stretches your arms, and leaves your soul slightly behind your body. One twist of the throttle, and the world turns into a tunnel. But raw power comes with consequences. Turbocharging a Hayabusa isn't plug and play. You're upgrading pistons, rods, fuel systems, cooling systems, ECU mapping, everything. The bill climbs fast. The complexity, next level. And the risk? Let's just say the engine doesn't always survive the happily ever after part. Still, for many riders, it's worth it. Because a turbo Hayabusa isn't just a motorcycle, it's a statement. A statement that says, speed limits are suggestions. Physics is optional. So how do rival manufacturers react? Honestly, if they're not trembling, they're lying. When a machine capable of 1,000 horsepower rolls onto the strip, every Hayabusa rival, from Kawasaki to BMW, suddenly looks <laughs> for you. Would you dare ride a turbocharged Hayabusa? Or is this level of power simply too insane for the street? Drop your answer below. I want to see who's brave.